Good morning and welcome to yet another episode of uh, our series of morning devotions for uh, uh, in our channel, Dawn of Faith. And uh, let me take the privilege once again to welcome each and every one of you and also to appreciate you for always joining us in this platform. Allow us pray so that we may consider the word of God uh, this morning. Our good Lord in heaven, we come before your presence this time. We are grateful for our life. We are grateful for the gift of your presence that dwells constantly amongst us. Lord, even as we want to consider your word and what you have for us this morning, we pray that uh, you may reveal yourself much more to us, that even as we consider your word, we may be able to see Jesus Christ and him being crucified and him having risen from the dead and him ministering for us in heaven. Now be with us till the very end for this we ask by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Today I'd like us to consider the book of John chapter 12, the verse is 32. But before we get there, just for context purposes, I'll read from verse 27, even as we proceed ahead to our main uh, key text, that is verse 32 of the book of John chapter 12. And the Bible has this to say, Now my soul is, tra is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to this hour. Then verse 28, Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Then verse 29, Therefore the people who stood by and who stood by and heard it say that it had thundered, others said an angel has spoken to him. Then verse 30, Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. And then verse 31, now is the judgment of this world, now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And uh, lastly, verse 32, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. And there are various things and there are various wonderful messages that uh, the Bible has to, has to reveal to us from this uh, couple of verses that we've just read. Uh, one is that Jesus was actually predicting his death by speaking to the disciples even during this time. And he was also in communication with his father who dwells in heaven. And he starts by in verse 27 by saying that, Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? To mean that for the burden that was being placed upon Christ's shoulders, the burden of the entire world's sin, they were waxing much heavy on, on the shoulders of Jesus Christ. And uh, being that he also had a human nature, apart from his divine nature, his human nature was growing uh, weary from these burdens of sin that were being placed upon him for him to be able to die for the entire generations that had, had dwelt and still continue to dwell on this on, on this earth. And this is why he makes this prayer by communicating with his father who is in heaven, who is also our father, that he is seeking the, the father's guidance and he is also seeking for strength from, from God, the father who dwells in heaven. And one thing that has been striking me over time is that despite the things that used to happen around Jesus Christ and the, the, the acts that he used to perform, be it the miracles, be it the healing of uh, those who are diseased, be, be it a provision of food for uh, those who lacked, uh, be it any kind of thing that Jesus was able to do. Still Jesus had those who were opposing his ministry. Still Jesus had those who were despising him and his entire ministry that he was proceeding on while he proceeding on with while he was he was here on earth. And uh, the answer that uh, Jesus gives them is quite uh, is quite intriguing. Uh, that is in verse 30, that Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. And then in verse 31, Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. Jesus is giving out a prophecy of how Satan will be cast out because Satan had taken dominion from Adam and Eve. Uh, remember from the book of Genesis chapter, chapter 1 verse 26 that God had given dominion to Adam and Eve being that he had put them in charge of the entire creation that was here on earth. But by them falling into sin, uh, that dominion was automatically transferred to Satan. And uh, Jesus uh, gives this prophecy that now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out to give us an assurance that despite all these things, despite all the 
perils and everything that the devil may have caused and the results of sin that we see even in our present world all these things shall come to an end by the devil being cast out and the verse that I'd like us to consider for this morning is uh, verse 32 and I if I am lifted up from the earth will draw all peoples to myself in this verse we as diligent Bible students will uh, by considering these verses and even uh, I'll also read verse 33. This is said signifying by what death he will die. To mean that Christ was specifically telling his disciples that he will die a death that will be shameful. A death that would require him to be, ha to be hanged on the cross. And uh, the Bible also tells us that cast is the man that is put to death by uh, being hanged on a tree. The tree in this case being, being the cross. And uh, for this reason we discover that Jesus was actually cast because for our sins, for our own sakes, he offered himself that he, was, he would be able to just have this shameful death, bear all the iniquities of the entire, gen entire generation that has ever existed and still continues to exist in this world. And he was categorically saying that, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. And he proceeds on to say that, uh, the Bible proceeds on to say that this is said signifying by what kind of death he would die. To tell us that Christ was prophesying that he would die by being hanged on the cross. And this, we can take it in the literal aspect that by this, Christ would be hanged on the cross. But there's also another aspect that I'd like us to consider, that Christ was also relaying a message that by him being crucified on the cross, by him being put to such a shameful death, remember that Christ when he was being crucified, uh, contrary to what even some of the movies that you may have watched of the life of Jesus Christ, it, they, do, they do not really portray how that death was actually was, how crucifixion in itself actually was. People who were being crucified actually as a matter of fact, when they were being hanged on the cross, they were being hanged totally naked. And now imagine if the Son of God was being put to such shame, to such such embarrassment that the, the Holy Son of God, the Holy One of God, the Holy Lamb of God was being put to such shame that he was being hanged on the cross for the entire world to see. But uh, there's a good message that he reveals to us that by this happening, he will be able to draw all peoples to himself. By this happening, he will be able to bring salvation to the entire generations of the world. Just by us believing, just like John uh, chapter 3 verse 16, that we can be able to we can be able to obtain salvation. We can be able to obtain a relationship with Christ that by us believing in him and in his word, we can be able to achieve all the, we can be able to obtain all this. That by him being crucified and being put to such a shameful death, he was actually doing it for us because of the kind of love that he was, uh, that he, he was and still continues to have for us. This, uh, this pushed him to do this for us. And this, uh, allow me also link it to the book of Isaiah chapter 53, uh, the verse is 5, uh, Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5, it has been termed as a, a prophet, prophetic gospel, yeah, a prophetic gospel. In the book of Isaiah chapter 53, the verse is 5, uh, the Bible says that, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed, that Christ had to bear all this because of the love that he has for us because he doesn't want us to get eternally lost but because he wants us to have a higher experience in him because he because of the kind of love that he has for us not just the kind of love that we may be able to compare with our fellow men that when we say that we tell our fellow brethren that we love you that kind of that kind of love even when it is put to test uh, can really come down crumbling but this love that Christ had for us it pushed him to the limit of even being bruised for our transgressions, being wounded for our iniquities, and the chastisement for our peace was upon him. That all our sins, the sins of the entire world, were placed upon Christ when he hung on the cross. And uh, this goes on to just exhort us that being that Christ has loved us with such an everlasting love, we also he has called us to show this, the same kind of commitment to him, that being that he has loved us, we also, he wants us to love him still in the same case. Not love him that uh, we should be subjecting ourselves to crucifixion, though those times will be able to come, but 
we should be showing our love to him through our actions, through our deeds, through the kind of words that we speak, through our relationships with our fellow men, through our relationship with God who is our creator, that we all these should be uh, revealing the kind of relationship that we have for us. And so I'd like, us, uh, I'd like to admonish us this morning that Christ still continues to love us. Christ still continues to call upon us that we remain faithful to him, just like he has constantly remained faithful to us as his children. That by believing in him and by believing his word, by constantly following his instructions and by abiding with him, just like he has told us in the book of John chapter 15 that we should constantly remain abiding in him, that we shall be able to get much more, we shall be able to gain a greater advantages by still remaining in him. So I'd like to conclude by saying that Christ is calling upon us that by reminding us that despite all the things that we may be going through in life during these times, let us consider and let us always be open to have his will in our lives and let us always be willing to receive his will in our lives. Otherwise, may God bless you and let me wish you also a fruitful day ahead. Blessings.